In this video, I will be creating a provisioning package using Windows Configuration Designer that will install Windows updates after the provisioning process is over. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video and I will leave the URL in the description down below. And here you can see all the objectives for this video. The main one is to install Windows updates, but I will also perform all the necessary actions to configure everything in out-of-the-box experience. So we'll be skipping out-of-the-box experience creating user admin without a password, adding admin to administrators group, skipping privacy experience, and privacy experience is the screen right here that we get after creating a user account and logging in for the first time. And also I will disable sleep for the monitor and the computer. And the full solution will look like this. Basically I will have two provisioning stages. One of them is performed by the provisioning package itself. Here will be configuring everything that we need for the auto logon. So skipping out of the box experience, skipping the privacy experience, creating user admin without a password, adding admin to administrators group. And also in the same stage, I will also be disabling sleep for the computer and the monitor. And after this stage, the second stage will start and we will execute the second stage by executing a PowerShell script called provisioning PS1. And here we'll be waiting for the network connection because we don't want to start installing Windows updates without internet access. After that, we'll be setting up PS Windows update PowerShell module. And after that, we'll be installing the updates. And that's basically it. Now I will start this video by downloading all the necessary files for this package. And I will start with the file that I have here called setup.ps1. I will click on it. And as you can see, it's a very simple PowerShell script. Here I'm creating a folder called provisioning. After that, I'm copying all the files from my provisioning package to that folder. And the last step is that I'm configuring run once in the local machine hive to execute another script called provisioning.ps1. And this will trigger after a successful sign in. And this provisioning PS1 script is responsible for installing everything that we need for our PS Windows update module and then executing Windows updates. So to download this file, I will click on the button right here. Then I will go back to my GitHub page and let's download the second file called provisioning.ps1. So I will click on it. And as you can see, it's another PowerShell script and this one is responsible for installing Windows updates. In the first part right here, we're waiting for the internet connection because we don't want to run anything that we have here if we don't have internet access. And I'm waiting by pinging Google's DNS servers. If they don't respond, I'll sleep for five seconds and try again. And the second part is right here. And here I'm installing NuGet Package Manager because we need to install NuGet Package Manager to install a PowerShell module called PS Windows Update. And after we have the module, we have the last stage. And here we're checking for Windows updates if we have available updates. And if we do, we start installing Windows updates. After we installed all the updates, we check if we need to reboot the computer. Because after installing Windows updates, sometimes we need to restart the computer, check for updates again, install them, reboot and repeat. And the script will check if we need to reboot our computer. And if we do, it will configure run once once again to execute the same script. And that means that after a reboot, the script will be executed once again. It will check for the internet connection. It will check if we have everything that we need for our PS Windows update module, then it will check for updates, install them, and check for the reboot once again. And this will happen over and over until we don't have any updates to install. And if we don't have any updates to install and the computer does not need a reboot, it will just write all done. And then we have a command read host, and this only prevents from the command line from closing so that we can see all the output. And to download this file, I will click on the button right here. And then I will go to my downloads folder because now we can start creating our provisioning package because we have all the necessary files. And now I will go to Windows Configuration Designer and start creating my package. Here I will click on File, then New Project. I will name the project package. Click Next, Next. Here I will select all Windows Desktop Editions, then click Next and Finish. And first, let's configure everything that we have to for executing Windows updates. So for that, let's go to runtime settings. Then we need to go to provisioning commands, expand device context. And first, let's provide the files that we need. And for that, let's click on command files. 
Then let's click Browse, go to our Downloads folder and select the scripts that we got from my GitHub page. Let's click Open here, then let's click Add here. And as you can see, the files appeared here. And now we need to configure the command line because we need this provisioning package to execute set to PS1 during the provisioning process. So let's click on the command line right here. Go back to the GitHub page because here I have the command that we need for this and it's right here. Basically, we are using PowerShell to execute the PowerShell script. Let's go back here, paste in the command here. And that's it for setting up Windows updates. Now let's create a package and see how it works in the current state without any other settings. And for that, let's go to export provisioning package. Let's click next here, next, next and build. Then let's click on the output location. And here we only care about the file that is called package.ppkg. I will right click on it, select copy, and then I will go to my VMware workstation where I have prepared few virtual machines. I will move the file to my desktop, then I will double click on it, click yes here, and then yes edit. And now let's explore and see what happens. So first I will open file explorer and let's go to C program data. We can see that we have our provisioning folder. In this provisioning folder, we have the provisioning script. Then let's go to the registry. For that, I will go to start menu and type in regedit. I will open it. And here we want to go to local machine, software, Microsoft, current, I mean Windows, current version. And then somewhere here, we should have run once. And here we can see our registry entry execute provisioning and here we have the command line that will be executed after a successful sign into this computer and basically it will launch the script that we have in our c program data provisioning folder so to trigger this registry i will close this this and this and let's sign out then let's sign back in And as you can see, our PowerShell script was executed. Currently, it should check for the internet connection, install the NuGet package provider, as you can see here, it's currently installed. And then it should install the PS Windows update PowerShell module, and then check for updates and install the updates. Let's wait a bit and see what's, what's going to happen. As you can see here, it found one update, it started installing it. And as you can see, the update process is over. We have few updates installed. And because after installing these updates, we didn't need to reboot, the computer didn't restart. So everything seems to be working just fine. And now let's continue creating our package. And for that, let's go back to the Windows Configuration Designer. Here, let's click Finish. First, let's skip out of the box experience. And for that, I will click on OB here. And for Hide OB, I will select True. This will skip everything that is in out of the box experience and now for the configuration let's click on the primary context here select the command and the first command that i will be creating is for disabling the privacy experience so i'll name it disable privacy and then click add here let's click on the command here then let's go to the github page and copy this command line right here and here I'm only creating a registry key, a registry entry called disabled privacy experience with a value one. Let's paste it here. Now let's create another command. So let's click on the command here and uh, let's name it create admin. Then let's click add. Let's select the command here. And here we need to provide the command line. So let's go back here. Let's copy this line. And as you can see, it's a single line, but it's two commands. One of them is creating user admin and second one is adding admin to administrators group. So let's go back here, provide the value here. Now let's create another one. And another one is for disabling the sleep settings. So let's call it disable sleep. Let's click add here. Select the command, go back to the GitHub page, and let's copy it. And as you can see, it's also a single line and it's two commands. One is for disabling monitor sleep, another one is for disabling the computer sleep. 
and let's paste in the value right here and that's basically it we're done configuring everything that we need now let's create a package and for that let's go to export provisioning package next 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 yes and build let's click on the output location let's right click on the package select copy go to my usb drive and let's move the package to my usb drive and let's go back to my VMware workstation and here i have another virtual machine that is an out of the box experience and one thing that you should know is that this virtual machine currently has network access disconnected because i want to check if my overshell snippet for testing for the internet connection is working now let's connect the usb and for that let's go to vm and removable devices find the usb drive and let's connect it and as you can see it's executing our provisioning package now let's wait a bit and see what's going to happen and as you can see the provisioning package was executed successfully and now we have this command line window waiting for the internet connection so let's connect this virtual machine to the internet let's go to vm removable devices network adapters and let's click on connect and let's wait and see what's going to happen now Here we can see that the PowerShell script detected a few updates and started installing them. And now it's almost done installing all the updates. So it should reboot the computer and the computer should execute the script once again. And this time the script only detected a single update and installed it. And after installing it, it seems that the computer didn't ask for a restart. And that's why we have this window right here saying all done. We can double check our updates if we go to start menu settings and then windows update and check for updates. It is saying that we are up to date and that's basically it for this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and see you in the next one.